good morning today we'll discuss about database management system now what is basically database management system even before we get into it let's see some of the fundamentals data data is a raw fact or the details for example i just say 45 45 can be a mark scored by you it may be age of a person or it may be the price of a commodity but when I add little more data or clarity with it, it becomes information. Now the collection of these interrelated data is called as a database. Why do I need a database or what are the applications? You just imagine your online retailing or you talk about your Amazon or Flipkart. There's thousands of data in it. How do I manage it? The data is not only regarding the product. It may be about the customer information, the choices of the customer, customizing their priorities, all these informations when I want to access, I need a particular software which can deal with all these things, the creation, access, reading, writing, relating, etc. Now let's just look into this. The DBMS is that particular software which we were talking about. So it is a software that enables users to manage the database easily. It allows you, it is an interface which allows the user to create, read, update, delete the data in the database in a flexible way. So we are going to learn this DBMS so that you are in a position to access the data, the enormous data in a very, very convenient, super fast and secure way. What are these applications of the database? You talk about database current age is it's nothing but a computer era where everything is online. Talk about banking. Banking information, you deal about customer information, the transactions, the account statements, anything that you are working with the bank can be virtually done online. Sales if you take. We have customer information, product information, purchase information, raw materials, all these things, online retailers, order tracking, customization of the recommendations, manufacturing industry if you take, production, inventory, orders, supply chain, etc. All these things can be the application of databases. It is just to name a few. Looking into the softwares, which are DBMS softwares, you would have heard about my my MS Access, Microsoft Access, one of the tools of the Microsoft suite. We have Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, DB2, Sybase, etc. MongoDB, current generation which most of the people are using. There are n number of DBMS application, whichever is convenient to us, whichever we want. There are open source, there are licensed softwares, whichever we want, we will be using that. The languages used for DBMS are SQL, PLSQL, MySQL, etc. Yeah. Now, what was before DBMS? Was the data not stored? How was it stored? Even now we use such systems, but DBMS is a better approach. You know, necessity is mother of inventions. When I found certain drawbacks with a particular system, I go for another system which can overcome that. I try to see new things and incorporate them into it. Now, before DBMS, it was all the file processing system, the flat files what we call. File system is a method and the data structure used by the operating system to control the data that is stored and retrieved. Most of us have used or otherwise in your programming languages, C, C++, Java or Python for that matter, you have used files. Now let's try to see what was those drawbacks of file system which have given rise to DBMS or otherwise how DBMS can be proved better over the file system. So file system stores and organizes the data that can be thought of as an index. You try to read the data sequentially. Of course, a betterment of that was index sequential. All these things are available, but let us compare file system versus DBMS. Yes, coming to the point. 
This was basically managing and controlling the data files in a computer system. Whereas, when we talk about DBMS, the creation, access, update, delete, all these things are managed by DBMS. Coming to the file system, there used to be redundant data. Now, say for example, I am talking about student information. Student information is required by accounts department, the exam department or otherwise the teachers. The information that is required for accounts department is the fee details of the student. Exam branch would be the CGPA. For teachers, it may be attendance. But in all these cases, because every one of them require, they all have a copy of the files, which leads to redundancy. Whereas in DBMS, I can reduce that redundancy by storing the data in a centralized way so that multiple users can access. This is another support. File system does not support multi-user, whereas DBMS gives you multi-user support. It can be stored in a centralized server and every user can have access to it and can retrieve the data which is of their interest. They need not have every data with them. Now, by having that every data with okay, duplicate copies with each uh, user, there is also a chance of inconsistency. Say for example, the student file is there with accounts department, the admin department, teachers and everywhere, exam branch everywhere. Now the address of the student changes. In admin they have changed, but in exam branch maybe they forgot to inform or with teachers they did not mention. Now there is inconsistent data. Each file is having different data about the same person or the same record which leads to inconsistency whereas due to the centralized storage in databases consistency is more inconsistency can be removed coming to the next applications data independence this is one of the basic concept wherein if you see in a file system processing of the data is dependent on the language in which you are trying to access it. Say for example, you are writing a Java program or a C program which has to reflect the data type of the stored data. If it is integer, the statement would be different. If it is float, it is different. That is removed in case of a data base management system because it stores the data as well as the metadata. Now, metadata is the information about the data wherein these features are taken care and the application program is independent of these. They need not worry about which type of data they are accessing. They just need to say what they want, what data they want. The background abstraction we say, the background is handled by the TBMS. This is what is one of the very important concept called as data independence. File systems are not that secured, whereas DBMS is secured. I can have access controls. I can specify which data to be accessed by whom. I can even mention what type of data to be stored. Constraints can be given. Now, say for example, I want to enter the details of people who are above 18 years. Minors are not allowed. Just imagine, in such case, Data entry itself can be restricted by writing constraints wherein the data I am typing, if the age is below 18, it will caution me. It will not take that. At the same time, I can even have the user access, restricted user access, the same set of data. Say for example, I am talking about a uh, employee database. Employees of an organization belong to different, different departments and managers of each department can access the main database, but with the restricted access to only their employees. These are the kind of security system that it provides. Then comes to backup and recovery. In the file system, default backup and recovery is not available, which has to be periodically handled through users or otherwise system admins, whereas there is a backup and recovery system in the database. Assume image uh, transaction, the database crashes, there is always a feature, log based features with which it can revert back to a safer state. It also provides the facility to get back the data 
all these things are the advantages of your DBMS. The cost of the file system is comparatively lesser, but whereas in DBMS, it will be little more than the file systems, but with so much of advantages. Okay. When it comes to the file system, if one application fails, it does not affect the other application system. Whereas in a DBMS, if the database fails, it affects the applications which depend on it. That is going to be the major drawback, but of course, there are solutions for that as well. In the file system, data cannot be stored because it is distributed in different files, whereas in case of a DBMS, it can be shared as it is stored in a centralized place, in a centralized place. The system does not provide concurrency facility, the system provides concurrency facility. Now, when I talk about concurrency, just imagine maybe you are going for a reservation system. Multiple users can read the data at the same time, but when they are accessing say for example, booking, both me and my friend who are accessing the railway database from different places wants to book tickets for a same day, same place, same time train, just imagine if both of them are allowed together, there can be data inconsistency. Now, in that case, the concurrency control system has got its own facility with which it can restrict one user when somebody else is using the same database. Depending upon its accessibility permissions, it can handle these situations in a well-defined way. Coming to the examples of file system, we do have NTFS, the new technology file system or extended file system, etc., based on the operating systems that we are using. And we have Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, DB2, Microsoft Access, etc., as an example of DPMS. So, these are the basic concept of how the file system was and what are the benefits or otherwise it, the differences between file system and the DPMS. So, to summarize, let us try to see the database advantages. You have seen the differences. Now, coming to the controlling, I mean uh, the advantages of DBMS, controlling redundancy. As I have told, instead of having copies of the data for each user, we can have the data stored in a centralized system which can be accessed by multiple users. It provides the benefit of reduced storage space and also consistency, data consistency because anything that we do, we do it in the single space. So, that is why you will not have different, different data by at each user, everybody will be accessing the same data. Next point what we said was data independence. This is again the fact which I was mentioning you in the differences where the application program is not dependent upon the uh, data that is stored. The data is independently managed and application program need not be changed as per the data. So, when, uh, whether you add new data, you change the data type of the stored data that does not affect the application program which we say as data independence. So, DBMS provides the abstract view of the data that hides the data representation and the storage details. Because of this, the application program becomes independent of the data. So, this is one of the major advantages. Efficient data access. You may see that when I talk about your online retailing store or anything, I want to check for a particular product from the huge database that it has, within no time it gives you that data. Whereas, when it talk about file system, if I have to read from that kind of large records, it will not naturally take longer time. Whereas, in case of a DBMS, accessing those data using different sophisticated techniques, the storage and retrieval becomes easier and efficient. Data integrity and security is another important advantage of database. Data is always accessed through the DBMS by enforcing integrity constraints. As I have told you, see before inserting the salary information of the employee, DBMS can check whether the department budget exceeds or not. 
I am increasing the salary or I am giving certain benefits, but will the budget uh, support that? Will it be within that? Can be checked. Or I told you, when I am talking about the age, maybe say for a particular job or a particular uh, admission criteria, there is a restriction of age. So, any person who is trying to apply for it, who exceeds the age limit, it can be immediately notified. So, such kind of integrity constraints can be inbuilt into the database. Coming to the next point, data administration. When several users share the data, centralizing the administration of the data can offer significant improvements. So, that is going to be another advantage of the database. Concurrent access and crash recovery, we already discussed about it in comparison about file system. When multiple users are allowed to access, they can access them simultaneously without damaging the data without creating any kind of inconsistency. That system is automatically inbuilt into the DBMS. Reduced application development time, that is because of the high level interface to the data, the data facilitates quick application development. So, these are all the benefits of DBMS due to which we are able to work with enormous online data very, very easily and quickly. Uh, accessing and managing the data. So, this is about the introduction. In our next lectures, we will see about the next uh, applications like data models. Thank you.